Hello, in this video, we are going to see how to download satellite imagery directly in QGIS. We are going to discuss five points. First, the semi-automatic classification plugin. Second, defining the study area. Third, choosing the type of imagery to download. Fourth, searching for available imagery and fifth, downloading the images. Before we go to the plugins menu in order to install the plugin, let's go to the blog, the web page where, where the plugin resides. The semi-automatic classification plugin is a free and open source plugin for QGIS that allows for the supervised classification of remote sensing images, providing tools for the download, the pre-processing and the post-processing of images. This is the website of uh, the people behind this plugin. It's called from gis to rs.blogspot.com slash p slash semi-automatic classification plugin.html. In order to see more, uh, elaborate more on this plugin, so you can go to YouTube, you can actually learn more. If you actually go to YouTube, you will find a channel and that channel has many uh, videos that explain the different stages of analyzing imagery using that plugin uh, and you can also donate so you can click on donate button and put some money to to donate to the project let's go to the plugins menu manage and install plugins and then start writing semi and here you go semi automatic classification plugin and we click on install plugin and voila so now we have semi-automatic classification plugin panel here I don't like to have the panel here so I'm going to close it but I do have a semi SCP menu bar where I have all the functions I have access to the download products for example so I'm going to click on it uh, that's the purpose of this video so what we are going to do is we are going to start by making sure that we are registered to all three sites here these sites uh, now I'm, I'm going to show you the sites themselves so you have the USGS site the Eros USGS site you can just um, register here Make sure you uh, copy your username and password. You can register in Earth Data site, and then you can register in the Copernicus SciHub uh, site. And you bring back all these uh, login, user and password data and put them here and click on the remember checkbox in order for the system to remember you. And then go for search. I'm going to close this one, this dialog box for now. I'm going to go back to the presentation. So uh, right now we have completed semi-automatic classification plugin. We have introduced it and we have downloaded it. The second part is defining the study area. For defining the study area, uh, we go to the browser. And as we done before, we are going to grab open street map and I'm going to go to one of the special bookmarks that I have stored and that is the Toshka Lakes the Toshka Lakes uh, is a region in the south of Egypt okay here and this is the place where if the flood is too high the water goes and gets stored in these lakes. So, uh, what I want to do is I want to download the satellite images that cover this area, recent ones. Once we have zoomed to our area of interest, we load the dialog box again. And this time we are going to identify our, our area of interest and that could be done in two ways. We can either key in the upper left and lower right uh, corner coordinates or we can just click on set area in the map 
and we just move away the dialog box in order to be able to and then we click we left click the upper uh, left corner and right click the lower left corner and here you go you have your area of interest I'm going to go back to the dialog box you see it grabbed the coordinates from my mouse clicks and this is how we determine the area of interest of course the corner coordinates are registered in the same coordinate reference system that is being used by the project which is a pseudo mercator of course the pseudo mercator was taken from OpenStreetMap. okay so let's go back to the presentation so we have finished defining the study area the next step is choosing the type of imagery to download now we do that from here from products we have all these types so we have sentinel with all the types of sentinel we have landsat 8 landsat 7 landsat 4 and 5 and landsat 1 to 5 uh, multispectral scanner aster modus and gold so we choose sentinel 2 the next step will be to search for the available imagery for our area of interest and based on the criteria that we are going to set. So in this case, we are going to set a date criteria. So it's from, date from to. So we are going to ask for all imagery that has been uh, taken in 2021 from the 1st of January 21 okay the first of february 21 okay i can set the cloud cover percentage allowed to less than 10 percent i can set the results the number of images to come out of the search and then uh, once i'm satisfied i can click find okay so now we have uh, the images we can actually click on the uh, left side on the image and watch the preview of that image on the right hand side there are two types of sentinel images listed here the l2a images level 2a images which are bottom of the atmosphere images and the l1c images which is level one uh, these are top of the atmosphere images of course we are more interested in level 2a which are bottom of the atmosphere or surface reflectance um, for simplicity i'm going to choose only uh, one one image to download so i'm going to actually select all these and uh, click uh, on delete I can actually load a preview image in the table of contents by clicking this button. And then I'm, I can minimize just to look at that preview image. So this is a preview image. You get back the uh, dialog box. So I can actually, I could have uh, downloaded all the preview images and then chose from these preview images. And then once I'm satisfied, uh, I can actually delete whatever I don't want from here and click only if preview in, in layer, which means that any preview image here is going to be downloaded. The last stop here is to click run. Of course, I have checked load bands in QGIS in order to get the bands that uh, are downloaded to load directly in the table of contents so I'm going to click run and open so as you can see there is a progress here it's downloading the image I'm going to pause the recording now and resume when it's downloaded it's finished now as you can see all the layers uh, all the bands of the Sentinel-2 uh, image have been downloaded. 
Of course, I could have filtered the download by clicking on the download options tab here. I could have, of course, lens headbands, Sentinel-3 and Ghost bands will not be downloaded because they are not included in the product that I have chosen. But I could have filtered out the downloaded bands here by unchecking some of the bands. I could have downloaded, for example, the RGB bands and unchecked everything else or just unchecked everything and clicked the RGB bands. Obviously, you can uncheck everything in the other satellites, although it doesn't matter because they are not going to be downloaded anyway, since you chose, you limited the products you are downloading here. Okay, so that was it. So these are the bands, as you can see, uh, this is the name of the band. Uh, the date, so it's 2021, January 30th, uh, and the band is band 12. We don't want all these bands. I'm going to remove these bands, and I'm going to just leave, actually, let me also remove the um, overview image. So now I have uh, band 2, 3, and 4. Uh, let me just very quickly convert them into a under miscellaneous build a virtual raster out of them. So I'm going to select uh, all three of them, uncheck OpenStreetMap, OK. And I'm going to click Run. I'm going to uncheck these. Actually, I'm going to remove them. So I have the virtual layer, which has all the three bands, but it's still a memory layer, which means it's just a temporary layer. I can always export it as a GeoTIFF by clicking Save As and selecting, um, let's see, let me place it in the same place so i'm going to call it uh, t36quuk and underscore uh, rgb save and run obviously i could have limited the the saved area by the extent. I could have cut it. I could have changed the projection system. Could have done uh, many things in the dialog box. Let me remove this toolbar. Okay, so now I have a permanent file, a GeoTIF file. I'm going to delete remove the, uh, the virtual layer and I'm going to uh, change the order of the layers so it's RGB instead of BGR so now it's a natural color composite and now you can start working of obviously you can always uh, as I said you could have when you are saving You can actually uh, limit limit the um, the area you want to save instead of clipping it, and also you can change the projection system while you are saving it. So you can do many things when you can even change. You can resample it to a much larger pixel size or or subsample it, and so on. Okay, so this is what I wanted to tell you this week. Have a good day and see you next time.